Before we begin, we want to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather and which the region of Peel operates is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, indigenous people inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabeg, the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwe Chippewa peoples. The land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land and by doing so, give our respect to its first inhabitants. We continue to respect this land as we move forward with today's workshop. This workshop again is being recorded to post to YouTube for those of you who want to learn after. I'm gonna launch a poll for a minute. It's just a few questions, so please answer it for us. That would be really appreciated. If you don't want your face to be viewed, again, you can turn off your camera. Uh, but at the end of the workshop, we'll ask you to turn on the camera to take a screenshot of your pieces. So if you don't want your face to be seen, you can maybe just hold your work in front of your face and we'll take a screenshot. If you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand or type it into the chat box. I'm here and I'm gonna help to moderate the chat. And now I'd like to introduce you to our facilitator for today, Susha Suresh and I'm going to hand it off to Susha. I don't see her on camera, but hopefully she's she's here and she's going to guide us through the textiles and block making. Are you with us? Oh, yes. everyone. I hope all of you can hear me. Um, I thank uh, the Art Gallery of Mississauga and Christina for giving me this opportunity to facilitate this workshop on textile block making and printing. And uh, I've been working with textiles for some years now and I especially have uh, good experience working with wood block prints. I come from India and uh, I work with the artisans and craftsmen of India who make wood blocks. And uh, I was teaching at a new uh, university over there and uh, uh, I, I teach textile design. I was teaching textile design and I actually um, uh, got this interest of working with wood blocks after my graduation project in my master's program. And I have never looked back. So textiles have always been my passion and I've always liked working with the artisan community. And that is how I developed interest uh, with wood blocks in specific. So uh, I would uh, also like uh, if everybody can introduce there are too many participants and if they would like to introduce themselves or if you like introducing themselves and why this, uh, why you have signed up for this uh, workshop and also if you have some experience on textile block making or printing, if anybody would be interested, I would like to know some uh, information from uh, everybody. Is, uh, is that okay? Like are there like too many uh, participants? Can, um, okay, so can you can put them in the chat box, like you can put them in the chat box if you would like to tell me anything that you've already done some textile printing or you wanna explore something more or um, the reason why you chose to be a part of this workshop and also share your border crossing stories. Feel free to do that during the course of this workshop. So I would like to base this workshop on my personal border crossing project, I mean border crossing experience. And uh, I moved to Canada last year in 2020 and in the month of Jan. And you can imagine what it would have been like, it's just a month and I only saw lockdown. <laughs> and I couldn't, uh, uh, what do I, I couldn't explore the country and the place where I have moved to at that moment. But then however, I found the, uh, my ways of keeping my uh, art practice going and also my textile practices going. And uh, I would like to take you through um, a, little, a little presentation um, of where I come from and how I'm going to base this little workshop on what I'm going to show you on screen. So I'm just going to share a presentation with you. Just give me a second. Um, So 
you can know if you see my screen. We're not getting a screen share right now. Just a second. Can everyone see my screen? Thank you so much. So yeah, welcome everybody to this uh, workshop with me, which is textile block making and printing. So I come from India, the land where there's a right of color and you see design everywhere, every day. So that's what I saw and grew up seeing. So it's color everywhere, it's, it's, it's food and it's, it's so much of design that I saw as I grew up in India. I am from the south of India. However, I've traveled across India whenever I've got the opportunity to travel. I've personally uh, drawn interest from architecture, Indian architecture, which is quite complex and it's got lots of details and a lot of decorative elements that make it look so beautiful and high level of skill workmanship that makes architecture so unique and exclusive. So most of my woodblock designs that I did initially have had a lot of inspirations drawn from the architecture of India. And I'm, this is the south of India. This kind of an architecture is something that you would see in the south of India, which has been a part of our life. Every, every week we end up going to some, some uh, temple or probably even a local place of visit, which used to have such intricate design and color and a lot of uh, um, a uh, lot of skilled workmanship that is a part of the that, that is a part of the piece of architecture that I see. And this is from the north of India. And this is especially from Jaipur in India. So um, it's um, I, I've traveled to Jaipur and Jaipur actually has been a great source of inspiration in my life where I picked up the idea of even taking wood blocks very seriously as a medium to translate on textiles. So Jaipur's had a large share of what I am doing today with textiles. So this is Jaipur again, the pink city of India. And these are some of the designs that you see on the architecture, on the friezes and panels in these beautiful havelis and mahals that you see in Jaipur. And yeah, so these are some of the wall paintings and frescoes that you find in um, the architecture again. and. Uh, Yes, this is a block maker who's actually making the block and that's the beautiful block that he's made. So this is how the process is of block making. So we have the design done and then you have the block maker carving out the block and then you have the block ready with wood and then you use them on textiles. So Jepo and every street in Jepo and every every little corner you see a man carving a block. So Jepo is so famous for wood block carving and textiles especially the town of Sangane. Yeah, so these beautiful workshops and workspaces are very, very, very a common sight in Jaipur again. And these are some of those beautiful printed textiles that I would like to show you, which are done using woodblock prints. So this is a little bit of the place where I come from and how architecture is actually um, help me draw inspirations and also take design elements and translate it into my work. So now uh, coming to woodblock prints. Oh, before that, do, do, does anybody want to share a border crossing experience? Any one of you would like to share your border crossing experience and if there's anything that you would like to um, share? Or maybe you can put it in the chat box. That's okay. I think I like it a little interactive so that I feel um, I, I also get to know my audience. So if anybody is willing to, please feel free to put, put your thoughts and views in the chat box. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, do I have somebody there? Um, I guess I can say that uh, I have a, uh, quite a few of the hand carved wood blocks and I use them in my wearable art. Oh, that's so, lovely. Uh, they're absolutely gorgeous and they so, uh, the detail in them is so gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm sure I'm sure from every place that you're coming from, there would be some 
So it would be some strong element that you would like to draw inspirations from. It could be architecture, culture, art, music, dance, theater, whichever that it could be. But uh, my personal border crossing experience is about missing all this design that I see. But yes, I do see a lot of design here as well, not that I don't see it. But I see them in these beautiful buildings. And I, I, I personally have always had a lot many of block designs that, I've that has got inspiring uh, that's inspired me to draw from the Merlin Monroe building that we see in Mississauga. So I've, I've come up with a couple of designs uh, that are Merlin Monroe uh, building inspired in Mississauga. So, so yes. Yeah. Can, can, yeah. can, can I ask, uh, do you design your blocks and then get somebody else to cut them or do you cut them yourself? The wood blocks, I have, I, I generally um, have the artist in car for me, but I get ready with the design and I tell them how I want the design to be, where the positive and the negative spaces, and I give them the design and then the wood block maker carves it for me. Yeah. So I, yeah, so the intricate ones that you see here are done by the artisan. Yeah, so um, I would also like to show you um, how a wood block looks at different stages, how it looks before, I mean, how it looks after the drawing is done, how it looks after it's chiseled half, and then how it looks complete. Just a second, I'll just show you that. Susha? Yes? I'm curious why you don't have your own blocks why don't you spend time i'm a textile artist i carve all my own blocks and i do all my own printing i do carve my blocks but when they get so intricate like this so and i had i had access to artisans in india so i did take their help and make sure that the community artisan community that is into block making is also getting help through designers so because in india they are a huge community that needs support from people like us but after, I see. yeah, yes, of course. So they, uh, they, that big, huge community in India, which does block making, and uh, unless and otherwise the designers help them, they're not going to, they're not going to have their livelihood there in India. Can you see this? So yeah, this is how the block looks when the when the drawing is drawn. And you have copyright over your block once you've uh, you've given it to the. Um to the um, carver or just the carver, can the carver then use it to sell on to other people? I didn't get that question. Uh, when when, the, tech, when you, the, the artist, you, the carver you've uh, commissioned to do your carving, it's carved your block, can he then use your design to sell to other people or does it, it, it just do it for you? Oh, it's just with me. Ah, see, yeah. Yeah, so um, I come up with a series of design depending on the collection that I'm developing. And I give, I get the blocks carved and I use it for my personal collection. Yeah. So this design. is- Design? Won't they use your design to carve other blocks? I get the block, I mean, I get my block back so they won't use my design. So that's that goes by trust factor over there. So I tell them like, please do not use my design anywhere else. And also for the fact that do not misuse them. So I don't have a control over it, but it just gives me the confidence to come up with more designs in case if I find them copied because I don't have a choice of stopping it. But however, the block makers don't do that. They definitely make sure that their clients are happy and their designs are not copied. So yeah, so this is, how it looks when it is drawn on the block, on the wood block. This is basically chalk powder and gum that they put over a piece of wood and then they have the design transferred. And we use nails and chisels to get these kinds of details. And um, this is how it finally looks. So I have not explored with wood, but yes, I have explored with more carve and soft blocks and speedball carving uh, blocks. I have done some explorations using that. So I, in India, I've mostly done all my work 
and my design development and the transferring of design from the design stage to the wood block has been with the help of the wood block maker. So, um, so that's a little bit about what I do. I would also like to show you some samples before we get to see how to make the block. So, um, so with wood block printing, every color that you want the design on to complete every color is a, is a block. So in case you want three colors in your work, you need to make three different blocks. Susha? Yes? Would you mind not screen sharing just so we can see it uh, larger? Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, if you can see here, yeah. every color is a block. And the number of colors that you need, that many number of blocks needs to be made. This is, this is the outline, this is the filling, and then there's another filling to complete this design. So uh, there are border blocks like those. Those are bigger all over blocks. There are border blocks. And there are some blocks which can be used as an outline and a filling and both put together like this. And uh, also done some color studies. Oh, Susha, Susha yes. do you overprint with the colors sometimes? Or do you keep the colors somehow separate in a way? Do, do you, if you were painting, if you were printing with yellow, might you put blue on top so it came green? No, you need to mix the color. You need to make sure that the colors and the Pantone matches before you start work. Okay. <laughs> if, if you overprint, what happens is the, if you overprint, it doesn't look, it doesn't look crisp. It looks a little, oh. unless if that is the, that is the effect that you want. If you're okay, okay with that overshadow and that like that kind of an overplay of two designs, one over the other, that's mm -hmm. okay. If you want a green, you mix the color and then you make sure that the tray is ready and then you use the tray with the color of your choice, check the pantone and if it's all okay and then we start printing. Okay, thanks. Also over here, um, if it is a yellow and a gray, so we make sure that this particular yellow is mixed and this yep. particular gray is mixed and then the yellow goes first, then goes the green. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that's how the, the, the technique is. So I think this sample would be much clear. So the ochre goes first, and then goes the maroon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have so many chat messages coming in. So let me just hope they're not. Yes, I print my own fabric. Um, yes, I do print my own fabric. And I can show you what, what I've done. So this is me saying natural dyes. So later, I developed interest for natural dyes. So I did some natural dye explorations. I used my rebellion and uh, indigo and a little bit of iron filling to get this color palette. And I used wood blocks and printed this beautiful stone. Yeah. And I also did a silk stone. It's the same, it's just that I can see all of them can see this. So it's indigo again and a little bit of um, myrobelin and indigo myrobelin put together with some iron filings to get that little dark greenish blue. So silk is a little more of a post process that we follow after printing because it needs steaming to fix the color. But cotton is fine. You can wash and steam like an, in a normal steamer and you get the color fixed. If the fabric is mordant, it's better. What I mean by mordant is it could either be an alum or a myrobillin depending on what, what material that we need and the intensity of color that we need. So if the fabric is mordant before printing, the color is much more stronger. Else the color has got a lighter effect. So we can play around with light and dark using natural dyes. 
So natural dyes has a lot of scope. I mean, in the sense with with a wider color palette that we can achieve, and also it's natural dyes. It's it's something that we can make and feel happy about. So um, that's a little bit about uh, block printing and dyeing. So I think we can get started with block making. So um, let me just go to my table. Just give me a second. Let me set my table. I hope. Um, if you can pin my table, I can, I can spotlight my table. Yeah, so we're going to um, make our own block. I'm going to show you three simple ways. One using a foam board, one using a foam sheet, and one using a mocha. So the motive that I carved out for today is little um, architectural dome-like structures that you saw in my PPT. So I have tried to draw this out and carve this out for this session. So you can feel free to do any design, but I can show you how this can be made. Um, is there any question? What fabric are you using? I use cotton and um, I don't use silk mostly because it needs a lot of post-processing. Cotton and any... Um, cotton depending on what the fabric is like. Do you use calico? Yes, I do use calico sometimes. Cotton and linen is good. Do you have a website? Tasha, Tasha, what, yeah. uh, what, what kind of wood is it that you use for your blocks? And do you use lino cutting tools or? I use the linoleum cutting tools. You use, sorry? I use the linoleum cutting tools. Ah, right. show you that. Yeah, the, the linoleum cutting tools. I use that for my blocks. And what is the what type of wood is it? What's it called, the wood? Uh, uh, did you mean this? Yeah, the wood. What what is it oak so or? traditionally in India we use teak wood. Teak. Uh, teak. Yeah. yeah. And I don't have these blocks. My block maker makes it for me. So he is more uh, he is more aware of what it takes to carve on this wooden block. I have never explored this, but yes, this is on a moo carve in a soft block that I've done, and this is using linoleum cutter. Yes. So anything else? Um, Are you going to cut it out in form? Is that form or wood? What you're cutting? The blue that you showed that you're going to cut, is that foam? What is that material? This is called the soft block mocha. Oh, okay. This is the soft carving material that we can do at home. And we can explore cutting on a soft carve, soft carve block. And these are what is used traditionally. Do you use linoleum? I have used linoleum, yes. And uh, the hard linoleum, no. I've never been good with the material because it's too hard for me to get the details, but soft, yes. I have done mocha block, yes. Oh yeah, mocha is something that is very easy for any beginner to start trying to explore their own blocks. It's very soft like a butter. It actually can, you can use a cutter or even a, carve, um, a linoleum carving tool and carve simple blocks very easily. Um, so let me just go to my table and start showing you what it takes to do blocks. Um, yes, just give me a second. Uh, We've got some feedback coming in there, uh, Susha. Can all of you see my table? Everybody make sure that they're muted, please. Susha, we can, we're having a hard time hearing you right now. Is it possible to continue to use the audio from your computer, but the video from your cell phone? Is it okay now? 
I think that's going to be our best bet. Can you talk for us so we can hear? Um, I hope everybody can see my table and also can hear. Yeah, I think we got a good setup now. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you so much. So uh, I hope everyone can see my table. And uh, so uh, this is how you get your week off. This is how it looks. And these are the blue blocks. And Before you get too far, is it possible to move the computer onto the desk so you can be talking more directly into the microphone for us? Second. Is that okay? I think that's better, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, you can use speedball carve also. This is special uh, speedball carve block and the uh, inks are specific for textile block printing. So um, this is using the line and uh, this is using a soft block and uh, this is how soft block looks like and this is how your mukar looks and I use this cutter to cut my blocks and it comes with multiple blades. It's got four to five blades, which you can use depending on the kind of detailing that you need for your block. So I carve this block using this cutter. Yeah. And you need a a little plastic plate or a tray where you can mix your color. Some paints, of course, I'm using acrylic and a sponge, or you can use a brayer, depending on which way is comfortable. Traditionally, the ink is poured on a tray and the squeezy is used so that the paint is even on the tray. And then the block is dabbed on the tray and printing. So uh, that's how it is done traditionally. So let me show you another foam board. So if you can see here, I have made these blocks using foam board. So you can use these so foam board, put them together on a, another foam board piece and make such blocks as well. Hey, Susha, I know it might be a, a bit awkward, but just keep in mind that the microphone is on the computer. So if you're I'm showing something to the camera, but maybe talking to the computer, okay? Um, yeah, sure, thanks, Daniel. And the kind of textile paint that I have is acrylic paint. And you can use speedball, water-based, and oil-based. Water-based for paper and oil-based for fabric. And uh, let's, have you tried to carve large pencil erasers? No, I have not tried large pencil erasers. But I think it will work because they are also soft like a carving block. So it should work. Um, hope. Yes, so, um, so I hope all of you have some access to foam boards and also to uh, art blocks and carving blocks. So I'm just going to show you how to use this particular sort of block to carve a wooden block. So, uh, First, before we even start doing any design, we need to make sure what is the size of the design that we need and how do you want to repeat the design? Do you want it like a larger tile-like design or is it a design where you want it as a unit? So you need to have your little bit of drawing work done before you want to transfer your drawing on the block. So that is important. Um, 
Yes, you can work without a press. Yes, and uh, water based acrylic paint is for paper. Oil based speedball paints are for textiles. These are speedball um, paints that are available for block printing for the purpose of block printing. So now let's get started. I hope everybody can see my desk. So I'm going to get started. Uh, I'm going to use this and this particular this particular blade for carving it out. So let me just get started. Just give me a second. Let me cut up. So I'm going to work on a two inch by two inch block. So I've drawn a two inch by two inch. Please use your cutting pads if you have one to cut the block. Yes, so I'm going to transfer my design on the block. I'm using a marker. So I'm doing a simple design like this. After you draw the design, it is important to know which part of the design is something that you would like to see on the fabric and what is it that you would like to eliminate. What I mean is we need to plan the positive and the negative space in a design. So um, if you look at this, if you would like the arch like shape and then if you want the gateway kind of an arch to not be visible, then we scoop out where you don't want it to be visible. And then we let the areas where the design to be visible as what they are on the block surface. So I'm going to make sure that I don't want this area, in my design, and uh, I don't want this as well. And I just want an outline of this. So I have marked my positive and negative space. So I'm going to scoop out areas where I have marked them in black. Please be careful if you're using the cutter for the first time because it can hurt. So you can either use small cutters or you can even use um, simple tools like screw driver just to get the outline. These are tools that have come handy when I started doing carving using these blocks. So I'm just getting the uh, Side out.
passed away has taken out So yes. Yes, I've got to define karma. I need to check if I need to carve out more. So I'm going to just roll some things and check how the impression looks. So that if I need more areas to be carved out, I'll work on them later. So I'm going to use some paint. Water based is for paper, yes. And oil based is for, yes, Shobhana. Water based is for paper and oil based is for textiles. I'm using a brio. Spreading some ink. And uh, I would like to first Test it on paper and then go to my fabric for color and also for design. So I don't want these little lines, so I'm going to count a little bit more. I'm going to check once again. This is more better. 
So now I'm going to print on my fabric. So uh, make sure you pin your fabric. You use push pins or at least these little bell pins to stretch your fabric so that you get good design precision and you don't lose out because the fabric sometimes tends to curl up. I'm using a cotton. I'm uh, using this kind of cotton fabric. So I'm gonna mix my paints. Maybe I can use the same color. Susha, I'll just read out one question from the chat as you're working. And it was, am I right in that Susha said to use oil-based paints for textiles? Yes. Oil-based, uh, only with Speedball, only with the brand Speedball. If you, wa if you want to use Speedball textile block print paints, they have two varieties. One is water-based, one is oil-based. Water base is water soluble, so your design will get washed away. So ideal for paper. If you're using it for textiles, it is oil based. This is only with speedball. So speedball has got these two kinds. And I use a special mixture of oils for fabric, but that's me. Okay, <laughs> good to know. What did you use for making design? Um, uh, I drew it using my pen. So. I mark my positive and negative space depending on where I want the design to be visible and known. And uh, yeah. Thank you. So let's go to the textile now. So we're gonna print this on fabric. I have carved out the similar block. I'm using a cleaner one so that I can show you better. I mean to see on wood or anything else. On the wood, yes, you need to use a mixture of chalk paint and uh, I don't know this this person from iPhone. So to answer you, so it is it, you need to use a mix of uh, uh, um, glue, not glue exactly, gum and uh, chalk powder, and you make a good sticky glue out of mixing both, and then you apply a coating of that on the wooden block so that you know where you can mark your details and also trace them. And that acts as the base so that the design is visible for the block maker to cut. And you see it here. The kind of a chalk glue layer. So I'm going to print on the fabric. I hope all of you can see my fabric. I have been using 50% PVA glue. Okay. So does that work on textiles, the PVA glue and the acrylic? Yes, it. I don't. I haven't exploded, but yes, maybe I'll give it a try next time when I'm working with textiles.
Yes, so thanks. I need to talk a little bit about what surface do you need before you print. Thanks for that. So um, in textile printing, while you're using this block, the surface has to be resilient so that you can actually stamp the block better like this. So it's good to use few layers of say jute fabric so that the table gets a coat, uh, gets some layers of jute fabric and actually make the table look a little more fluffier on the surface. And then you can add any soft fabric. In this case, I have added this. And on top of it, I've also given another layer of plain white muslin, cotton fabric. And now this is actually making my surface very cushiony and my block sits better when I print. Yes, you cannot print on a flat table. You don't get good impressions. If the table is too flat and hard, you need some resilience. So it's always good to use some layers of fabric, old fabric, rags, whatever. But the topmost layer, at least the topmost four or five layers needs to be smooth so that the fabric sits better and the block can also be uh, printed better. Do the block maker use chisels on lino cutters? Uh, the block maker use, uses chisels and nails. Blue block is made of soft cloth, soft car. Um, the block, yeah. The blue block is a soft car block. So yes, I'm sort of happy with what I'm getting here. So I'm going to change the fabric so that we can do a fair new piece of textile. So I can keep this for drying. I'm going to do a new one. I'm ready out. So, yes, I'm going to pin my fabric. Fabric is stretched well and pinned. combination of these two blocks. No paint. Brayer, I prefer the brayer. You can even use sponge. But um, sponge gives a specific texture, unless and otherwise you like it. But you need, if you want fine, good quality printing, then I suggest a brayer. So you roll the paint using a brayer. Yes, I can. Uh, yeah, I can get a wood block card. How much does it cost? Depends on the complexity of the design. And number of colors as well. If it's a single color, then it's just once the cost. So if you want more than one or two colors, then it depends accordingly. Sure, I can let you know, Kat. I would like to, um, I'll let you know about that as well. Maywa sells blocks. Yes, I think Maywa sells box, blocks, yes.
So I'm going to use another color. And I want to probably create some element here. So I'm going to use another color. I want to take another view. I'm going to up the other color. Yes, if you want to put an outline drawing on the print, it is printed in last, yes. Um, the filling goes first and then goes the outline, Ruth, yes. How do you line the print? And, oh, that comes by practice. It takes some time. So you may not be getting the correct outline to the filling initially, but uh, you can separate the design depending on the number of colors that you want and then plan your outline and your filling accordingly. Now, let's say assume this is the block. If you want an outline black, you cut the same size and you scoop out everything and leave the outline alone visible. Thank you. Thank you, Winston. So if you want the outline, then you need to actually scoop out everything and leave the outline. But it's very important that the size of the block is same. And also the design is trans the, the, the same design is transferred so that you have the outline and filling for the same same block. How do you line? Yes. So I'm assuming some of you all are exploring it as well as I'm showing this here. Oh, yes. Uh, I would like to show you what I did with simple foam blocks also. So these are just simple foam goals that you can cut and put them in different shapes and paste them to get these beautiful blocks. You can even use, um, you can even use uh, twine and thread and uh, roll them up on a piece of block of foam initially to just get the hang of what it takes to print before you move to MOOC uh, or soft blocks. I'll show you how this effect is. So you can get designs like this. Hope you can see that.
you can have a large tile like repeat that you see here. By making sure you place the block in a different alignment and you get this bigger design. So can I get to see some of your works? Whoever has been exploring along with me? Oh, lovely. Look at that. Beautiful. Do you have anything to share about that work, Edna? Wow, that's beautiful. This might be a nice time to grab a, a screenshot of everybody's. If every, I've seen like one here and one here, if maybe everybody wants to go up at the same time, we could get a nice yeah. screenshot. They all look really cool. Wow. Oh my God, look at Zena. So lovely. Those paisleys are beautiful. It's, it's actually, um, I bought these blocks like years okay. ago at, at, a, at a, um, an art exhibition, but never used it. And I thought this is a great time to use it. So thank you very much. Beautiful. Oh yeah, I like that. Edna, I, I like that, Edna, I can't see that clearly though, but then yeah, that's so beautiful. I like the textures. Just a note for Karen, if you're still not able to see people's designs, in the top right corner, you can toggle between gallery view and speaker view. So if you go into speaker view, you'll be able to see all our participants and the work they've been doing together. I would like to show you some of my blogs. So, yeah. And I did grab a few screenshots. So thank you everybody for holding your works up. I appreciate that. That's so beautiful. Oh, I love the textures in Jen's work. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. Maybe I'll go around and spotlight some of the different yeah. works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So. Wow, that's beautiful. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's Ed. Um, I just used uh the soft cut lino and carved that out. Um, but I, I haven't um, used a, a brayer, is it, for putting the paint on? So it's splodged a bit there. <laughs> but I'm sure with practice, I'll get it better. <laughs> but it was brilliant. Thank you for the teaching and hosting. And really good. Sorry, I'm, forgive That's me. That's beautiful. So thank you so much. Oh, lovely. <laughs> thank you all for sharing. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes, if you can say something about your work. Oh, here we are. <laughs> I didn't have the right material, so I I made a sort of um, uh, I stuck some cardboard on top of some cardboard to make some marks because the moo hasn't got here yet from Amazon. That was a disappointment. Um, but I really enjoyed the talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. And I'm sure if you get the move, you'll do beautiful blocks. So I'm sure you're going to get them soon and explore more. 
<laughs> Susha, I see a question about, do you share your work online? Uh, where's the best way? I do, yeah. You can look for my work on my Instagram handle. So I post my sketches, print drawings, wood blocks, my work with saris and what I did in India, all of that on my Instagram handle. And I don't have a website yeah, Sorry, yeah. I may have posted the wrong one. Uh, there was a Susha who did block making as well. Um, what's your <laughs> handle on Instagram? Is it s.u.at? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Apologies, oh, everybody. Yeah. yeah. I'll find that one and repost that one. Okay? I'm right now working on putting my block print kits. So very soon I may be coming up with my own kits. Oh, we're getting, seeing your email now here. Judith Benswell is sharing their screen. So maybe we'll just cancel this um, spotlight video. Judith, are you are you with us here? We're watching, we're in your email right now. So <laughs> it might not be ideal for you, not too sure. Um, I'm gonna stop this, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, any other questions? Anything else like to show me as your work or any doubts? You can email me. I have put my email in the chat box. And that's my Instagram handle. You get to see a lot of my work that I do every day and also about any other future workshops that I will be doing. And uh, yes. So the lines, how do you align the stamps so that the lines are even? That comes by practice, Ellen. It might take some time, but I'm sure you get that. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> yeah. It, it, oh, yeah. You can do one thing. As a beginner, I suggest you kind of can draw lines using a ruler. And you can actually have little grids put on your cloth using a marker, let's say a pencil or a marker, or a textile marker. And you can start using your blocks with the help of a grid initially. And then maybe, you know, you will be a pro at it later. <laughs> thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So mm -hmm. any more questions? You? This is my very first block printing and I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I had a really good time. Thank you. Yes, Janet, those are some of my blocks on the table. Yes. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Um, we're not That's getting my... any video from you right now, Susha. Let me... Uh... Is it okay? Yep, we see you now. These are some of the wooden blocks. Yes, uh, books to recommend. Uh, yes, just give me a moment. Let me just break, pull out the books to show you. Yes, so I suggest this book. Uh, not sure if you can see. Good. Block printing magic, thank you. Can you hear me? Is that a light? Yeah, I, I can maybe put the name. As we read the fabric to set the colors of the printing. If you're going to use tactile prints, heat press. Reverse the fabric and iron the fabric. Who is the author? Looks Emily Louise Howard. I think that was it.
Thank you, everybody. What's the best way to treat the fabric to set the color after printing? Um, sun dry the fabric or leave the fabric overnight for 24 hours. Reverse the fabric in hot iron. And if you're going to use oil based, yeah, oil based also works well that way. But they need to uh, they need to uh, dry at least for a minimum of 24 hours. And uh, what is the best way to clean the block and the bray of running water? And don't use them if they are wet. Use a clean cloth and wipe them off. And uh, thank you so much, Heidi. Uh, block print magic, yes. Magic. And I have learned so much from this wonderful book. This is called the print pattern suit. I've learned so much from this book. Yes. yes. I can't see the author Any on that question? one. Yes, what was the author on that? Oh, see, I'm sorry, I've got it now. I think it, I think it was Jen Hewitt. It's, it's yeah. a bit blurry, but I'm, I'm trying to pick them yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, this is a very good book. And this teaches you all your tools and all your uh, materials and how to handle materials. And this book also has some uh, work of uh, textile artists, how they have done their blogs and how they've explored textile printing. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, I think, uh, Daniel, can we have a picture with everybody's work? I, I did grab a few when everybody was holding them up, but if you want to do another one, we could certainly do another one. Do uh, do I would like to have everyone put up their work. Can we do a picture? Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, maybe a gallery view. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Susha, you're going to gr grab a photo too, for sure. Um, yeah, just let us know when you're ready. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. <laughs> so happy everyone's enjoyed the work. Oh, wow. Did you did you get one, Susha? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I think I managed. If you didn't, I can always share because I, I have a few now. So if you didn't, I can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I hope all of you had a good time. Thanks for coming for today's workshop. Keep Thank exploring. Keep printing. Write to me if you have doubts, and do get back to me if you want any help, support, any tips. Any doubts, feel free to write to me. Thank you so much. And to see more of my work on my Instagram. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good afternoon Bye. and a great weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Well, it was my pleasure. It was so much fun. <laughs> Thanks to Christina. See you here, though. Yeah, Christine, he's been having a little bit of computer problems, but uh, yeah, it was really great. So if anybody does want to rewatch, we'll we'll post it on the Art Gallery of Miss Saga website in the in the next few days. And that was really lovely, Susha. I have never been more excited about block printing. It's something brand new for me, but watching you work, I thought, oh my gosh, I would have so much fun doing this. And I didn't have the materials with me today, but hopefully in the future. always explore later and get back yeah this is just dipping my, my toes in the water to be like oh this is a brand new form of artwork making for me and just to see the process and to learn from from you even just uh, at an early stage was really cool okay with that said i think i'm, I'm gonna Thank close so the room I'm gonna, um, unless there's any last last words from you susha I'm happy and thanks to our gallery of Mrs. Saga for hosting, I mean, for giving me this facility, uh, giving me this opportunity to facilitate this workshop. And thanks to you, thanks to Christina, thanks to all my lovely participants. 
and I look forward to do more workshops and please keep sharing your work that keeps me motivated and happy. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, uh, Susha, and to all Bye. the participants. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day.